What's up? I'm your boy, Amateur Pro Home Chef Nathaniel Levinson, and today we'll be taking a deep dive into the ingredient that is flour. Flour is an essential part of baking. It essentially is the base for, well, for all of baking bread, cookie, whatever you name. Wheat flour, in particular, is going to be the bulk of ingredient that you're going to be using. And there are some differences. Now, there is, of course, the traditional all-purpose flour. Your run-of-the-mill uh, workhorse that's going to be good for just about everything. And for most things, you can substitute in all-purpose flour. It will affect the recipe a little bit, but but the main difference, so there, there are you know, three main types of flour that you can get. You can get all-purpose flour, you can get bread flour, and you can get cake flour. And the main difference between those three is the level of protein that remains in the flour after the processing. So bread flour has more wheat protein, AP has kind of a middle amount and cake flour has less. What this means is you are going to get gluten formation based on the amount of protein that you have in your flour. So bread flour is obviously more ideal for breads. Breads, you want gluten formation because that's what gives bread that chewiness, that texture that you're really looking for. All-purpose flour does have enough gluten to make bread, so you can make bread with, with that. And then for cake flour, they, they remove more of the protein because for cakes, you don't want that you don't want gluten in generally to be in your cakes um, because it, it, you want a soft, cakey, spongy texture rather than a chewy uh, dough, you know, bread-like texture. Um, the other thing about cake flour is that they incorporate a little bit of starch, whether cornstarch or wheat starch, to kind of keep things from clumping together, but that really doesn't affect the cooking properties of it. Um, there are also, of course, all sorts of alternative types of flour. Uh, of course, if you're, if you're going gluten-free, right, you can have things like almond meal, or uh, you know cornmeal. Uh, there are a lot of alternatives for you. Uh, there's also things like corn flour that are used in a lot of uh, Latin cooking. So you know you can look for those sorts of things as well. Rice flour, things like that. The only thing to keep in mind is if you use a substitute flour, the lack of gluten will change how your product comes out. Right? That gluten is an actual crucial component for a lot of baked goods. So just keep in mind, it will still taste good, but the texture will change. Okay. The uh, final thought is there's also certain, um, there are flours ground from other grains such as rye um, that are low in gluten, rye and buckwheat that are low in gluten um, but high in protein. Uh, these will generally form a drier, denser product because uh, first of all, they're, they're more hardy but they're also not forming gluten so you're not gonna get that stretchiness kind of expansiveness that you're gonna get with bread dough. But uh, regardless of which one you choose, uh, flour is a crucial component for all baking. So uh, as to whether you should get bleached or unbleached, I generally lean towards unbleached. Uh, the reason they bleach it is just to make it look more uniformly one color. It doesn't do anything to enhance the flavor. It doesn't do anything to enhance, uh, well, anything. Uh, another thing to look out for is self-rising flour. Self-rising flour is flour that has had essentially baking powder mixed into it so that you don't have to add baking powder. So do also look out for that as well when you're purchasing flour. Until next time, I'm your boy, Amateur Pro Home Chef Nathaniel Levinson. Flour power, baby.